Okay, let's talk about fracture mechanics. Fracture mechanics. Now, mechanics is a scary word, but it's not going to be too crazy in this. The first thing we need to think about is that fracture occurs because of crack propagation. We mentioned that for the ductile, we mentioned that for the brittle. Cracks propagate. In ductile, it's because those voids are forming. In brittle fracture, there's some sort of defect and it just propagates from there very quickly. Which means the, the fracture strengths of most materials are actually much lower than what they're predicted by theory. We say that they're going to fail at a particular point. We have that nice stress strain diagram and we can use theory to figure out where that's going to be and it's honestly much lower than that typically. And that's because there's always flaws. There's always flaws in our materials. No material is perfect. You know that when you look at wood. Look at wood. There's always knots in the wood. There's always grains in the wood. There's always some sort of defect or nick or something that's happened to that wood over time. And all of those microscopic flaws, they are going to reduce the amount of strength that uh, amount of strength of that material. Um, and the, because, the reason for that is because any tensile stress that is applied to that material is amplified at the tip of those cracks tip of those cracks it is suddenly amplified. So let's look at this. This is what we talk about right here. So flaws of any sort are stress concentrators. So we can have either have an internal or an external crack. By the way they're a stress concentrator. And so therefore my stress that is actually felt like the magnified stress that is felt at those cracks is going to be equal to twice my normal stress, just like the regular stress without taking anything into account, times the um, length of the crack over the radius of the tip of the crack to square root. And as a note, internal cracks, their length is 2a, external cracks, their length is just a. Just think of an internal crack as being two um, external cracks. So this is a good thing because while we can't necessarily know this to start, there are things like ultrasounds and other technologies which can help us figure out what size cracks we have in our material and we can then figure out from that when it's going to fail. Like is it strong enough to take the um, stress being applied to it. So if we then look at this, what we can see is using that equation is that our stress gets greatly magnified as we approach that little crack right there. At the edges, we aren't feeling anything, but as we get closer and closer to that crack, the stress gets greater and greater. It gets more and more concentrated. We can, even if we want to define some sort of stress concentration factor, which is just us dividing the magnified stress by our original stress. Now one reason we would want this stress concentration factor is to then show how things are going to affect it. Like for example, this is a plot of the stress concentration factor as a function of various things. So what we see right here is we have a larger surface up here and a smaller surface over here and so we're having to cut down on it. And when we do that we're reducing the area and we are also having some sort of radius in that fillet. Now, as that radius approaches zero, that's a sharper fillet radius over here, you can see that our stress um, concentration factor, it increases dramatically. The larger our radius, the smaller my stress concentration factor, and also the smaller the difference between various things. Like if I want to go from a big width to a small width, if I do it over a very, very large radius, there's really not that much of a change in its the stress concentration. It's okay with that. Just make it a really big radius and you won't have to worry about it too much. But, but if you were to do it up here, as you can see, that is a huge jump going from a large width to a small width. If you have a very, very small radius. This is one of the reasons that when you're making things in SOLIDWORKS, if you take my SOLIDWORKS class, we always fill at the edges. Like filleting the edges is just one of those things you have to do because one, sharp edges are dangerous, and two, sharp edges lead to failure. So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.